Okay, so today's maths, we are understanding hundredths and thousandths. Okay, now we're starting with um, a bit of a visual here with some hundred squares. And I've also put in um, that place value grid, which should help you as well when you're using that terminology to think about what the, where the, that digit would go um, in terms of where the decimal point is. Okay, so this first one, we've got a hundred chart divided into a hundred equal pieces. For the second one, we've got 0 0.01, okay? Now that, if we're not sure, we can check here, is that second column after the decimal point. So that is one hundredth, and we can see there, one hundredth of that square has been colored in. Here, we've got 10 of those hundredths that have been colored in, okay? If we look at it another way, it's been divided into 10 columns, and one column has been colored in. Okay, so if we've got 10 columns and one's coloured in, that's one tenth. Okay, and if we're not sure, one tenth would be that first column after the decimal point, so 0 0.1. Okay, if you're not sure today, go back and have a look at the 100 square, look at the place value chart as well, and use those visuals to help you. Okay, now your first questions, you've got these to be partitioning. We had a, did a bit of this last time, so this shouldn't be too difficult. Let's have a look at this first one. 46 hundredths, okay? Now, when we do that, I want to think about um, going back to thinking about what that would look like if we were thinking about our hundred square, okay? So, let's have a look here. If we had our 46 hundredths, there's our 40 that first block there, and there's our six, okay? So when we want to partition it into how many tenths, the 40 part is how many tenths? It's four tenths. So if that's one tenth, we've got four of them. Then how many hundredths have we got? We've got our six hundredths. So for some of you, um, using a hundred square might really help you to see that, okay? Make sure you're thinking about what was it dividing into. So if it's dividing into 10 equal bits, that's 10 of those columns or 10 of those rows, okay? And four of those would make our 40. Let's have a look at this next one, 20 hundredths. So how many tens would that be if we'd had 20 hundredths coloured in on that hundred square? So we've got 20 hundredths there. So how many tenths is that? That's two tenths and zero hundredths there, okay? So have a go. You've got, um, those are the first two, you've got the other four to have a go with, okay? If you're not sure, then look back at those examples that I've just gone over with you. All right, then we've got um, four more questions. Have a go at doing these. Make sure you read the instructions carefully. I'm just gonna quickly explain what you need to do for each one. So it says, use the place value chart and counters to represent these numbers. So you can use counters if you've got them, you can just write down the number if not. So we've got A, B and C. So for A, you've got, um, you've got different counters which have different values. So you just need to put those into the right place on the grid. So three, those are three whole numbers. Then you've got five tenths. Um, three hundredths and two thousandths, okay? If you need to look back, look back on that um, place value grid. The second one is four ones, six tenths, zero hundredths and two thousandths. And then you've got three for this one. This is, that's your three, that's a whole number. And then 34 thousandths. So B, that's a bit trickier. Have a think about that one, okay? I would go back and look at this again. Have that open in front of you, that will really help you too with those ones, okay? Don't forget to double check as well. Right, the next one, um, <clears throat> you've got this, this is your example which you're going to be using for each of these that you do on your own. So here we have our number, just like we have here. And then there are three different ways to write that number. And that's what you have to do for each of these ones. And you need to use these as a template to help you. Okay, so this is 0 0.394. We can write that as 3 tenths, 9 hundredths and 4 thousandths. So for this first one, you can do exactly the same. 4 tenths, 7 hundredths and 2 thousandths. Then use the second one with the fractions for the second one 
and the third one with the decimals for your third one and use that same structure there for each of those three numbers. Okay, this next one's a bit tricky. So see how you get on with this one. It's tricky because you've got to work out what the intervals are worth on the number line. So if you printed this off or if you've got this, you might want to write in what each of these longer lines are worth and work out which what those values mean as well, okay? And for each of these three blue arrows, so one, two, three, you need to write each number as a decimal and as a fraction. Remember that if you've got a number before the decimal point like that two, that is a whole number. Okay, so that's a bit tricky that one, but have a go with that one. And finally, um, you've got some more of these visual um, hundred squares. So you need to write each one as a fraction and as a decimal. I've done the first one for you. So maybe do the fraction first, work out how many equal bits it's divided into. We've got 10 columns. So 10 is going to be your denominator. And then how many are colored in? Seven are colored in. So I can write that as seven tenths, okay? And then if I've got my seven tenths, um, I can use that place value grid again to work out my decimal. Okay, so have a go. I would do the fraction first. What's your denominator? What's your numerator? And then use that to help you to find your decimal. Okay, good luck with those. Once again, have a go. Try your best. Any problems, um, we can talk about it later on this afternoon, but give it a go um, and see how you get on.